Let me explain who I am and we'll start doing it. I'm a guru. I go around the world guruing to various businesses. But you see, the whole of this today, the whole of the, the, whole of the, Ted, the Ted whole thing is about people coming with ideas. Wah, da, 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 da. Ideas. But the ideas are supposed to make us change. So the whole day has been a complete waste of time because nobody ever wants to change. They hate it. We fear change. We've got an audience here of intellectual, thoughtful people who think things through and make life decisions and, and can kind of do... I'm telling you that you can't change. Oh, Jeff, we can. I can do change. All right. All right. For me, to humor me, for, I want you to change something in your life. Nothing big. Honestly, I don't want to... I don't want to disrupt your life. I don't want to be responsible for that. So ju just to humour me, when you get back from this day, change a little thing in your life, a tiny thing. I want you, from this day forward, to sit in a different chair to watch telly. <laughs> See the chaos that that causes. What are you doing sitting there? I went to see a guru, and he told me, yeah. And yeah, I am, I am working with businesses and I'm supposed to be guruing to them and making them change. And it's a complete waste of time because nobody wants to change. And the other thing that business and schools and everybody is striving for is completely the opposite. It's competence. Oh, we want to deal with our competences, Jeff. When you're competent, you never want to change. Competence makes you resistant to change. If you're a brilliant pianist, you'll never pick up a trombone as long as you live. And, the, and that's the whole kind of point. We have this thing where the businesses strive to make their people more and more competent and more and more focused. And then they tell them to change, which they can't. And this is kind of my job, and I really want to share with you over the next few minutes the frustrations of what I do. And change is not a thing that jumps out of bushes on you. It does sometimes. But I want you to do an experiment. I've got some lovely experiments for you to do after my presentation. And my first experiment is I want you to go to a really turgid, weird swamp somewhere, like Slough. And, then, <laughs> and what I want you to do is to get a large galvanised bucket. And what you're going to do is you've got to find a really happy frog. Ribbit, ribbit. It's got to be content. It's got to be healthy. It's got to be happy in its environment. And I want you to scoop the frog up. Bear in mind that you've scooped it up with a big bucket of its pond water. So to the frog, it is still happy in its environment, okay? And then I want you to trundle home, pop the bucket on the stove, and turn it up full, and watch what happens. The frog will sit there, happy in its environment that it's always loved. Ribbit. And you get little bubbles. Bloom up. Ribbit. Bloom up. Ribbit. And then eventually you get a rolling boil, and the frog bobs to the surface like this. Dead, eyes white, steam from every orifice. And then you've got to stand back and say to yourself, what should... Look, all right, a lot of you are getting upset at the <laughs> idea of boiling. Listen, if this upsets you, you can't bear to do it. You can do it with any domestic pet. <laughs> hamsters, kittens... Well, I worry about hamsters because I think they know because they scrabble and squeal. Anyway, <laughs> listen. But the question, the point of this brutal experiment is what should the frog have done? Jump. When? <laughs> Where? At what beginning? How? 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 Come on, oh rubbish! Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Come on, you sit there in your job. Oh, bank account's going down a bit. Yeah? <laughs> a lot of people are being laid off at work. You know? And we sit there like stupid frogs. Wait, to be like, when? Come on, when are you going to do the jumping? When? Ooh, first bubble, second bubble, bit hot. All right. I want you to try it again and again. Boil a frog, boil a frog, boil a frog, till it gets boring. They never jump, right? So, we'll add some fun. We'll flip a coin. Heads you live, 
Tails you die. Right, head you live, tails you die. Wing! Tails, let it, leave it boiling. Right? <laughs> Doing! Hey, ah! Turn the gas off. Whoop! Right! Do you talk to the frog? What do you think the frog will have said? Oh, 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 God, you saved my life. Thank God, you saved my life. No, the bloody great stupid green half wet says, There you are, lad. Sit tight and the bloody gas goes out. No! <laughs> Every time. Because you only ever get to speak to living frogs. <laughs> Who's ever spoken to a dead frog? Well, if you've had a few. But, you know, a little frog. But on the whole, so everybody you ever speak to who gives you advice will say, just sit tight, don't do anything. The reason they say that is because they survived. They think they survived because it was something they did. Which is cobblers, you know. The thing is, it's, what we, the thing is with change, how do you do it? And how do I? In, in businesses, businesses. Uh, I went to an art college in the 1960s. And it was one of these places, they would search us for drugs when we went in. And if we hadn't got any, they, they'd lend us some for the day. And uh, we all thought we, thought we knew about it. Oh, oh, you know, the parallel universes. And we were all into Zen Buddhism. And Zen is the religion that says everything changes, man. The only thing you can be sure of is change. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And we used to say Zen Buddhist things about change. We used to say things like, you can't stand in the same river twice, man. Oh, wow, no, because it's like changing and flowing. <laughs> but the one that's come back to haunt me is, we used to say, what a caterpillar calls death, we call a butterfly. <laughs> oh, that's like really beautiful, because that little caterpillar is changing. And he like thinks he's dying, yeah? Oh wow, my little stumpy legs has come off and my skin's going, I'm dying. No, little caterpillar, die, you're not dying. Little guy, you're not dying. You're changing. You're not dying, you're pupating. You will emerge with coloured wings, you'll sip nectar from the flowers. You'll make love for the first time. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? But I'm working in organisations where the people joined as caterpillars. They don't want to be butterflies. I've tried showing them a slide of a butterfly. And there's always one at the back who says, you'll not get me up in one of those bloody things. <laughs> and one day this company rang me. Jeff. We want you to check. What had happened was they'd done all the management things, total quality management, just in time, the whole thing. And they manufactured cars. <laughs> and, and at the gate of the factory, they had got these perfect cars, all shiny and new and ready to deliver. But the mistake, the mistake they had made was that they needed these cars delivered. So who delivers cars? Lorries! We'll deliver them on lorries. Who is going to drive these lorries? Lorry drivers! How do you find lorry drivers? Wanted lorry driver must be good timekeeper. How do you measure how hard they work? By the amount of cars they deliver. Oh, didn't they get on with it? They'd knock the wing mirrors off. They'd crack the windscreens. They'd scratch them. They'd batter them. They'd let the chain swing. And over a year, these drivers were doing three million pounds worth of uninsured damage to these cars. So they rang me. Jeff, we want you to change our drivers. Me? How, how am I? You're supposed to be a guru. You're supposed to be an agent for change. Come and change them. How? And then I found this wonderful American book on management. It was called Company Heroes. By acknowledging and rewarding your company heroes, everybody on the team will want to behave like a hero, and soon you'll have a whole team of heroes. <laughs> I got a room full of Manchester lorry drivers. <laughs> Which one are you? Which one of you is the hero? There was no hesitation. Brian! Brian's our hero, Brian's our hero, Brian's our hero. Brian, aye. Why are you their hero? I don't like to talk about it. 
Terry, why is Brian your hero? Oh, bloody tell you why he's our hero, Jeff. Oh, bloody tell you. He went on that low bridge and he had the roof off eight Volvos. <laughs> Death, there's a joke that's very apposite. If you want a child to eat sprouts, you have to give them a packet of sprout seeds. If they grew them, they'll eat them. A change inflicted is a change resisted. The one thing that you do not want is somebody to come and change you. You will not have it. You will resist it. And so how... So I meet but my dad. <laughs> my dad was a Viennese psychiatrist and his specialist area was homicidal maniacs. Now, yeah, if I was a kid, when I was a kid, if somebody was sitting on the settee at home with a carrier bag, there would be a human head in it, you know? <laughs> but he, he was Freudian. Everything was sex. But there's another lot who are called Pavlovian. And they believe you can bring about change by reward and punishment. Reward and punishment. Reward. And I don't agree with that. I meet bosses who think like that. Since we, that's me, Jeff. I'm firm, but I'm fair. I'm tough with my people, but they respect me. I think, yeah, I bet they do. <laughs> carrot and stick, Jeff. That's me. Carrot and bloody stick, me. I've seen you using the um, stick a lot, but I've never seen the carrot. What is the carrot? The carrot, Jeff, is if they bloody behave, I won't use the stick. <laughs> And I've got an American friend, and he's Pavlovian, and he and I just don't agree. And I decided to test him out. Can he change behavior through reward and punishment? Can you do that? So I got this big, hairy dog from the dog's home. <laughs> and I arrived at his beautiful Santa Monica beach house, the ocean and all this. Bing bong. Hi, Jeff. How you doing there? <laughs> can you train this? <laughs> Sure I can. So I let the dog go. It shot past him, shot past, and into his living room. White sheepskin rugs, picture windows. First thing this dog did was a huge poo on one of these rugs. <laughs> he went mad. He started beating this dog. You filthy, stinking animal. Boo, ow, boo, ow. Picked the dog up. <laughs> and he threw it out of the window. <laughs> Woo. Anyway, I arrived the next day, let the dog go, dog shot passes up the hall, enter the sitting room, another poo and another rug. He beat the dog again, you dirty, stinking boo! Oh, boo! Oh! Picked it up, oh, threw it out of the window. Oh, 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 oh. Arrived the next third day, I arrived again, let the dog go, shot passes up the hall, another poo and another rug. This time he lost it. He nearly killed the dog. Boo! Oh! Throw it out of the window. Roar, 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 roar. This went on for three weeks. <laughs> I thought he's not going very far training this dog. But then on the last day of the third week, I let the dog go. It shot past us into the sitting room. It did another poo on another rug and it jumped out of the window. <laughs> The number of times since we introduced flogging for any member of staff caught petty pilfering, we have not caught anyone stealing. So the stealing has stopped. No, we just haven't caught anybody. <laughs> so, this, what happens is people don't create cultures in their business. These kind of weird mutinous things go on and cultures grow themselves. How, how do you do this? Well, for instance, I've got this terrific, for a mis I'm a miserable bugger, honestly. If I smell flowers, I look for a funeral, you know? Some people call me a motivational speaker. I'm English. It's like English motivational speaker is like a Jewish court butcher, yeah? I don't but I have this faith in people. It's probably misplaced, but I, I believe that to get joy from life, Nobody does a bad job on purpose. No one goes, I, I had a great day at work today, I did a really crap job, you know? So what makes people behave like that? And how do you stop the dog pooing on the rug? Beating it is just teaching it to avoid you. 
What you've got to do is creep around. The dog poos everywhere. It's not maliciously doing it. It's just an incontinent, great, airy, stupid dog. What you've got to do is creep about. Where do you want it to put in the garden? Wait in the garden with a biscuit. When it poos in the garden, you give it the biscuit. Uh, if you want to change people, you have to try and catch them doing things right. If you catch people doing things right, it, that, that's what people check. People fly towards the light. You know, people, people will avoid being caught. And this is a story about rats. They had two rats, parallel cages. Food at either end of the cage. And uh, what happened was that the, every time the rat went to feed, there'd be this huge electric shock, lights flashing, and a hooter going whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah? The rat is so stressed. It was a thing. What does stress do to your health? Both rats are so stressed. What's it going to do to their health? Every time the rat went to feed, whoop, 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 zzz, ah, oh, God. Yeah? But then one rat finds a button in its bed. By nuzzling the button, it shut the power off in the floor. Still got the hooters and lights, still terrify the little bugger, but he could feed. Button, well, off to feed. The rat in the cage next door realised that once the button was pressed, they could both feed. Bonk, whoop, 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 and they'd feed. After six months of this, they went back to the cages. The rat in the cage with no button, all his fur had fallen out, he'd got tumours, he'd got depression, and he just flopped on his side and died. The rat in the other cage weighed 18 stone, <laughs> who's got long black silky fur and fiery red eyes, and anybody who got near him, he'd grab their lapels and try and nut them. But why? Why? Anyone? See, everybody says control, control, the audience said control, but it's not control, it's not control, it's, it's, it's input, it's being allowed to contribute to what's happening to you. It didn't reduce the stress, it didn't get him out of the cage, but it kind of freed him off. Change. Why change? We're all doing all right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But look, because I'm weird, I say, if it ain't broke, break it. We have mental energy. There's your mental energy. And when you've had a good night's kip and some good grub, your mental energy is at a hundred percent. Come on. Yippee! Then the phone rings, doesn't it? You know that stuff you sold to Mr. Martin yesterday? It fell on him and killed him. Oh, great. You know the new boy who started... He's gone on about 100 quid out of the till. What? Marion's not coming in. She's got diarrhoea through a hole in her shoe. <laughs> so by about five past nine, you're feeling drained of your mental energy. You've only got about 50% of it left. And you bump along the day just half worn out. Unless it's, of course, one of those days that actually gets worse. And you sort of hear that your mother-in-law has been in a really horrible accident and has walked out without a scratch. <laughs> You're left with nothing. I'm not finished. I'm done. Gone. Done. Nothing. Gone. Drained. Finished. When should we change? When should we try something new? It's got to be when you're full of energy and enthusiasm, isn't it? Change when you're feeling good, yes? Yeah, I'm so proud of you. I can see you nodding. Yeah, Jeff, you're nodding your heads. You are wonderful people. You are the sort of people, thinking like that, you are the sort of people who would stand naked in front of your bedroom mirror and you'd say, <laughs> What a body, tight thighs, flat stomach, firm chest. Woo! Nah! Time to go on a diet. Is that right? Or are you really like me when I run naked across my bedroom and find I've got carpet burns on my ass? Oh God, I'm going to go on a diet. I'm just saying, 
to sum up as the times we do it, if we're going to do change, why don't we do it when we're feeling good about things, not when the wolf is snapping at our heels? Change is something we fear. If you want other people to change for you, you've got to try and catch them doing things right. Thank you so much, everybody. Cheers.